my name is Philippe Ansarguet, and I'm really absolutely delighted to be here with you today for this opening keynote. Um, I am the Chief Technology Officer of Orange Business Services. So we are the B2B arm of the Orange Telco Group. Basically, just some uh, background. Um, as a company, we used to define ourselves as a network native digital services company. And basically, as Chief Technology Officer, my job is about to nurture, define, and steer our technology vision and strategy. And uh, it's absolutely super exciting because we are currently moving from a telco DNA to a techco, a technological company. And um, it's a unique moment because we have the digital, the IT, the network, the telco that are in a highly converging phase. And um, we strongly believe that this unique moment looks like more uh, like a revolution than a simple evolution. And the topic of today will be, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure, um, 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 a, a perfect example of uh, this uh, revolution. I wanted to say as well that I'm board advisor for several startups in which Orange Venture has invested, and in particular, Cycloid and WeWorks. So I prepared this opening keynote as a forward and prospective thinking session to pave the journey to modern telco and network um, uh, players. So basically, I will speak about modern apps, those approaches that are encouraging collaboration and sharing between teams and members, and in the same way, automation at large of the old technological part. So yes, I will speak a lot about DevOps and mainly GitOps that becomes the de facto model to release and operate application and services in cloud native environment up to telco and network side. On my side, I discover, I would say, uh, this movement, GitHub's nearly four years ago, and I had the opportunity to deep dive uh, on it very deeply on the last two years, because WeWorks, I'm a board advisor for, is a prominent actor of all this ecosystem. So let's jump in. So, um, like I introduced previously, whether you are in digital IT network or core telco business, all the core foundation technology are at a unique moment of converging. And this converging and this convergence is, um, I would say, mainly due to the fact that every business around the world, and in particular, it's true for the telco and network ecosystem, we are really needed to accelerate and to move forward much more faster. When we listen to uh, our customer, basically what they are saying, they are all saying the same things. They say, um, basically our strategy is mainly the same than in the past, but what is the absolutely and truly difference is that we need to execute it at a more uh, fast pace reason. So the acceleration is absolutely key. And that's why this convergence is um, a critical moment in terms of our history where we need to do the pivot. And these pivot are organized for me around some very, very strong foundation. The software that make programmable, dynamic, and flexible almost all the layer of our services, I would say since the hardware that we can now compose up to the services. Then we have the API that are uh, uh, no more or less than the air that the business is currently breathing that allow quick integration and the ability and open, I would say, the door to automate the things. And the last topic, of course, is the automation. This automation that allows to deliver system highly resilient and secure and allow, I would say, to make um, company their business scaling. The last topic um, about disaggregation, I would say, is perhaps something that is um, more related to the fact that we do not want any more black box model, okay? So the idea is uh, we, we, we definitively now in 2022, pick and choose the component that make us successful and agile in the same moment. What is absolutely key for me here to catch is that the cloud is 25 years old, cloud net is 15, and all this taught us great lesson and learning about switching from a prescriptive way 
to a declarative one natively prone to automation and API based product that conduct us where what where we um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a context that we we, we call the immut immutability and I would say that in this context, the impact of Agile, DevOps, DevSecOps, and GitOps, all the modern ops, um, uh, I would say, um, methodologies and approach um, are here to push the level and support the push of level of expectation, uh, I would say, in every kind of business. And it's particularly true for the network and for the telco side. So yes, we need absolutely to pivot and to understand that there is new rules, new game, and new business that has emerged. Um, if I want to end up with the topic of the convergence, I think that is absolutely key to understand that we succeeded our journey um, based on, 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 on the cloud that bring a very interesting new model uh, to set up and, 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 and drive and operate business. When you are in the telco industry, most of our peers, basically, when you had a deep look into their own infrastructure, have tens, hundreds of different clouds, whether they are the clouds of the IT, the clouds of the telco, the clouds of the business, of the B2B, the clouds of the edge business. And it, it, it drives us to a very, very, I would say, fragmented way of rolling out all this um, uh, infrastructure and services. Uh, and even if uh, we, we gain at the level of abstraction where we want to make the deployment, um, uh, we are um, unfortunately relying on very versatile environment. And we can say as well that um, with the cloud appears uh, the DevOps movement, like I introduced previously, that bring together people, have a better collaboration, um, uh, um, um, removing the different silos and making people more connected. And in the other way, I would say in encouraging the all the automation topic. And what is really interesting in our moment is that um, considering the convergence that I introduced previously, it's gonna go, I would say, um, um, a step further because today um, I would say that cloud native, so the way to design and implement services that will natively use the core properties of the cloud in terms of distribution, in terms of resiliency, in terms of scalability, in terms of security, and so on, I would say is um, really shaped because um, instead of having only the cloud uh, runtime that may be very versatile, with uh, the cloud native runtime, and in particular with the Kubernetes platform, we have a new ecosystem, a new operating system, I would say, that is able to bring another layer of abstraction on top of uh, the different cloud runtime that open the doors for even more synergies to build and to roll out and manage the life cycle of the services. And it's for us in the network industry and in the telco industry, a very strong opportunity to um, have a common engineering and common way of rolling out uh, stacks and all the life cycle that allow to, I would say, deploy the services, whether they are in the IT, in the telco, in the B2B or in the edge, in something that is much more consistent and coherent. And something that is super important for me is not to say that uh, cloud native is starting from a, a, a blank sheet. No, we can inherit from all what we learn from the cloud, from the DevOps. And today, it clearly opened the door to um, this new way of operating the services at the cloud native age that is called GitOps. Um, this slide for me is very important. What I want to highlight here is just to set the focus on the fact that um, most of the time in the company regarding their maturity level, we have three hats in terms of level of automation. We have uh, basically the continuous integration, the continuous deployment, and we have the whole continuous uh, operation. What I observe on weekly basis, I would say, is that a lot of people have invested a lot of efforts, money, people, tooling, tool, 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 tools, uh, to mainly focus on the two first one, and basically um, uh, because they, they they did not, uh, I would say, perhaps automate 
far enough, the full life cycle up to the operation fold, they are hitting what I call the scaling wall. The scaling wall for me is, is happening uh, when a EU company uh, that has strongly invested in CI, CD, mainly uh, supported by DevOps practices, has um, uh, consider that if they want to continue to scale because of the pressure of the market, basically they have no more option than to do it very relying on, I would say, uh, people and a human workforce. And that, that's where they are eating what I call the scaling wall. Because today um, uh, we have a very versatile um, uh, kind of um, uh, target in terms of deployment. Uh, it's about the application, it's about the destination of the infrastructure, it's about the fact to work in multi-cluster, in multi-cloud, in, in hybrid environment. And if basically you did not automate the things to embrace the full life cycle and the full perimeter, at the moment, you won't be able to scale at the level that your market is requesting. And that's where GitOps uh, enter in the room. Uh, basically, GitOps uh, can be defined as simple as to be uh, what DevOps is for the cloud. GitOps is for cloud native, what is DevOps for the cloud? So um, GitOps have been coined by my friend, uh, Alexis Richardson, who is the founder of WeWorks. So basically here, the purpose of GitOps is to propose a set of practices that are able to manage from the deployment up to uh, the operation and considering the full ecosystem. It's about building the infrastructure and the application, managing the security and policy enforcement, bringing natively at the heart of the runtime of the engine and the application observability and, and monitoring capabilities, and, and embracing, I would say, the practices that allow <laughs> to make the deployment. And those deployments can be um, in a very versatile way. You can um, embrace and engage with A-B testing, green, uh, blue-green or canary. It's a perfect um, open door for entering in the world of what that we call progressive delivery. The benefits that are related to GitOps are very, very simple for me. The first one, you have a single platform for infrastructure, core components, and application. You dramatically increase the deployment and faster feedback and control loop. The control loop topic is absolutely key. Um, you gain a lot of reliability because you enable cluster and application operator model with very standardized and well-known tooling. In terms of compliance and security, you are able to enforce standard security policy and audit trails, and I uh, would say perhaps the most important one, when you're in the telco ecosystem, you are able to deploy the complete cluster directly from Git, which is the, the, the source of trust, whether is it on bare metal or on virtual machine ecosystem. So in terms of vision, the idea is clearly to have all the application, the infrastructure, and all the management topic working and coming and operate and operated from a single and common workflow. So GitOps is definitely bringing what we call the, the cloud native operating model. And in this operating model, what is absolutely key to catch is what uh, we call here the immutability firewall, meaning that uh, what happened after your CI, uh, your continuous integration steps, basically where you are building your, your uh, infrastructure, where you're building your application and services, everything that happened after uh, this stage is definitively managed from a declarative way. If you remember in my intro, I talked I talk about the imperative way versus the declarative way. In the imperative way, people, when the, when the service has been deployed, basically used to uh, connect on the servers to manage some parameters or to, to tweak some, some, some values. 
in the world that I'm basically describing here, it cannot happen because um, uh, it will uh, basically introduce a kind of, of, of drift, a difference between the desired state uh, that you may have uh, um, incepted at the very beginning and what is running. That's why this immutability, uh, I would say, a firewall is absolutely key. Everything that happened after the fact that your uh, code, your infrastructure, your artifact have been built, should be absolutely managed the declarative way to be 100% automated. And it opened the door for very interesting, I would say, uh, benefits. Uh, in terms of deployment, uh, you are able to automate the deployment uh, of a new, new version. If the problem occurs, because it's Git-based, you're able to come back to the, to the previous working version. And uh, one more time, we all know the power of um, this uh, history and version system that is Git in terms of source of trust and its ability to bring, I would say, traceability, history, so clarity and auditability about every deployment. So it's about the deployment of the infra of the application, and it brings a lot of value in terms of observability as well, because you are able to automate the way you inject all the observability and monitoring, um, I would say, services to understand what's happening live on your, on, on your highly distributed uh, services running in this cloud native environment. So basically uh, you have uh, in uh, uh, real time stick to the, the, the very last version that is running in terms of services, um, the ability to uh, troubleshoot or to have directly all the KPI that will allow you to um, uh, understand what's happening in your platform and uh, to win, and, and tweak and, 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 and tune it uh, to uh, manage uh, your customer. So everything around this is coming from GitHub. So um, um, there is something super important because uh, the GitHub principle uh, popped up uh, several years ago. Um, in 2020, um, uh, some, in, some, some actors from the tech ecosystem uh, feel the need to basically um, gather all themselves and define um, the, 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 the GitOps um, working group. Um, um, and this GitOps working group is, the, is a vendor neutral home where I would say all the principles are um, defined and where all the actors of this ecosystem are working hand in hand to make uh, all of this happen. So, um, GitOps principles are quite simple. It's defined by four uh, pillars. The first one is the fact that everything should be declarative. So um, you store um, in your uh, repo, uh, in, your, in your version control system, um, uh, basically the desired state uh, that you want for your infra, for your application. Everything is version and immutable. Uh, basically, um, uh, you are able to keep all the complete history of all that happening. The model is pool. This topic is absolutely key. In a normal, traditional CI CD way, it's basically the CI CD uh, platform that is pushing uh, your artifact into the, um, uh, the runtime environment. So it means that um, if uh, to do so, uh, your CI CD platform uh, need to have all the account, all the security information to open the connect, to open the connection, and I would say push um, the artifact. In the GitOps model, it's working the reverse way. It's not the platform who is pushing, but it's the runtime environment that will pull um, the, the 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 desired state <coughs> and the artifact. Uh, and it's very interesting because it's a strong separation of duty and it's a better, I would say, uh, segmentation of the responsibility around all the chain. And the last one is the fact that it's continuously reconciled. The idea is that on the runtime platform, you have a kind of demon that is constantly uh, trying to um, uh, observe what is the current status of your infrastructure, of your application. And each time that a, a local drift basically is identified. It apply from a pooling model, I would say, uh, the, 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 the artifact that should be deployed or 
um, you can have what we can say a positive drift, meaning that you have a new version of the application or an extension of the infrastructure, and it's automatically, uh, I would say, the runtime that will identify it and that will deploy, um, I would say, um, the, the new version of the application or the infra. Um, so the benefits for me are quite simple. The first one that is perhaps the most important one is the ability to deploy faster and more often. And it's key if we want to stick to the, the, the new pace, the new rhythm that our business basically um, uh, is, is pushing for. So um, what is interesting here, uh, no need for new tools. Everything happens in Git and, and the learning curve is very, very fast because it's a tool that we are using since decades. So we can deploy, observe, move forward or roll back, and it's a super high velocity system. So number one, deploy faster and more often. Second one is the ability uh, to uh, recover from uh, fast from errors or from issues. So you have all uh, basically the complete history of uh, how the environment is changing over time. So you are able to revert to the last stable version, whether is it the infrastructure of the application. The, sec the third one is about the security. And uh, to make your deployment uh, happening, uh, your environment only need access to your code repository and image registry. You do not have to give the direct access to any kind of user. It's the platform, it's the cloud native runtime that we pull and that manage all of this. And of course, the last one that is uh, very, very important in certain business is uh, that, that it is the compliance and the ability to have uh, audit trail. So um, if we want to say words uh, of all of this into the, the, the telco and network ecosystem. So in this telco and network ecosystem, we are in front, I would say, of major uh, evolution. So uh, we have to manage new kind of telco services, whether is it open run 5G or cloud native network function. Um, uh, the business um, of the telco services, the, the services that we are using on everyday basis, whether is it ordering, billing, catalog, activation, and so on, uh, we should have the same expectation in terms of rhythm and 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 um, in, in the in the way it, it is modernized. And we we have the telco services and the OSS and the OSS BSS the need to manage the business apps that our customer uh, basically will buy. And what is very interesting is that um, all of uh, those components, whether they are telco services, OSS, BSS, and business apps, and whether they are deployed from the central cloud up to the edge nodes, are able uh, to be targeted to this cloud native model where we all have to manage critical things. It's about the life cycle of the platform and its automation. It's about the observability and the monitoring. It's about the security. And we can as well add the green imperative um, um, in, into the, the, the old pictures. And in all this context, basically here, GitOps approach can cover a lot of this challenge. Whether is it the deployment and the automation of application, the orchestration and rollback. It's true for 5G, it's true for CNF, it's true for where, whatever part of an OSS BSS. A blue-green deployment strategy is absolutely key when you want to have an innovation. So it's more on the OSS BSS and on the business apps uh, topic. Observability, of course. And um, what is interesting as well, the ability to manage uh, all the underlying Kubernetes and cloud infrastructure in a very declarative, in this very declarative way. And it opened the doors, of course, for compliance and high uh, regulation. And um, in certain area, it's something that is absolutely key for the telco and the network business. To be very concrete, um, I would, I'm, I'm really delighted to share with you um, a project um, that uh, have been announced during the Cloud Native Telco Day at KubeCon in Valencia. I would say it's two, it was two, two, months, two months ago. And um, we at Orange, uh, with over um, a European telecom operator, 
are currently uh, building an open source telco stack to accelerate the adoption of cloud native operator model. We are all facing the same challenge about the historical model, about the threat um, um, uh, due to the, ex the level of exposition of the infrastructure, the need to embrace more cloud native services of network um, ecosystem to really be able to have the, 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 the scaling, the different kind of scaling across our services. And we want to roll out um, dynamically uh, those services on infrastructure that we are able to build to 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 build and to extend and to extend on the fly. So here, what is absolutely key is that in this whole model, where as a driver we have, of course, the network performance uh, in terms of quality for our customer, um, the, the need to answer to highly distributed cloud ecosystem to uh, um, embrace best-in-class security model, uh, to embrace as well the energy efficiency model, and um, the, the, the will to strongly rely on open source and standardized API. And in this whole very complex ecosystem, um, it's absolutely key to understand that GitOps basically will play a, a central uh, role uh, and um, we, we, we bet on, on this approach basically to overcome eating the wall that I introduced previously and more importantly, open and enabling new operational model uh, to uh, embrace uh, new competitivity um, and productivity um, into our uh, product and services. So as a final word, some key takeaways. First key takeaways. So basically, I, I hope that you will have, um, that we'll keep in mind that at the core of GitOps is this concept absolutely key of immutable uh, deployment. Remember, we shift from imperative to declarative and enter into this immutability ecosystem. And with this immutable approach, you are able, we are able to manage the state, the desired state of your environment, whether is it the infrastructure of your application. GitOps is absolutely based on the very well known since decades of Git and thanks to Git and all the tooling ecosystem around Git, you and we are able to manage and build a consistent continuous deployment model. Um, if you remember the, my story of convergence, what is really interesting here with GitOps is that basically it's certainly today the, 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 the most valid option to support the scaling uh, while keeping the, the level of quality and extending up to the operation fold. This part about the new way of embracing operation is absolutely critical because the role of the orchestrator of Kubernetes and its ecosystem is, uh, I would say, bringing so much automation and so much resiliency and auto and self healing that it should have a strong impact on the way we want to operate. So yes, like I said, GitOps is the way to overcome eating this famous uh, scaling wall. Um, and uh, it's based mainly, I would say, on, on a, a lot of principles uh, that uh, have been inherited from uh, DevOps. So as a final word, and perhaps my last key takeaways, um, GitOps has already proven its interest in telco and network concrete use case. And for instance, um, WaveWorks has already deployed 5G packet core in, a, in, in high availability environment, uh, continuous application delivery for a telco cloud, and as well building the global, um, I would say, uh, telco um, um, uh, environment and, and the telco stack at scale, considering the cloud, the clouds <laughs> up to the, the to, to the edge. So, GitOps is not, I would say, um, a topic for two, three, uh, five years from now. No, it's 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 happening now, and we definitely are um, able to to integrate it in. I would say a step by step approach. Here well, it is for my uh, opening keynote, uh, Honey. Uh, I think that I'm gonna. Uh, handing over to you. Well, um, I have a lot of questions, but um, I'll get you later, so to speak. Um, so, Philippe, let's take uh, the question from um, our audience. 
Um, and this person says, great presentation, and asks, in this environment, can the solutions or platform bear the cost of being multi-cloud? So the, the, the question is related to um, the, the cost of all of this, am, am I right? or In this environment, so I guess in the GitOps environment, can solutions or the platform bear the cost of being multi-cloud? So I guess the suggestion of multi is that multi-cloud is a super expensive option. Um, uh, uh, de definitively, um, yes. Um, you, we, with the GitOps approach, uh, you have a very fine grain uh, I would say a management of the underlying infrastructure. So um, I, I won't be too taking in this in this answer, but uh, thanks to a standard uh, like cluster API, so CAPI, uh, that is working jointly with 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 the GitOps approach. Basically, we are able um, um, natively with Kubernetes to set uh, infrastructure in diverse. Uh, cloud environment and uh, manage uh, your rollout strategy across these multi-cloud uh, infrastructure. So definitely, yes, uh, GitOps uh, brings um, uh, a lot of interest when you want to move in multi-cloud environment, uh, I would say in a very professional and uh, productive way. Yes, definitely. Philippe, Philippe. Um, our questioner thanks you for the answer. I thank you for your presentation. Great stuff as always. We hope to see you at another of our events very soon. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Annie. Take care and the best for these two days of amazing events. Thanks so much. Thank you.